Praise the Lord. Rise up as we pray together. I want you to commit yourself to the Lord for the Bible study tonight. We thank the Lord for those who are here and those who are gathered in all the places. We have the Bible study. And we pray that the blessing of the Lord will enrich our lives tonight in Jesus' name. Why don't you open your mouth and talk to the Lord. That the Lord will open your eyes of understanding. And what you hear tonight will enrich your soul. Will bless you, prepare you for eternity. That God will help you and wake you up. You will not be careless about your soul. And as the year is running to a close, that your covenant with the Lord, your pact with the Lord, will remain firm. You'll be unshakable, immovable. That the grace of God be sufficient in your life to face whatever may come. That you in Christ, Christ in you, the hope of glory will help you to focus on the right thing. And the purpose of the study and the purpose of God bringing us here, bringing you here, and all those are brothers and sisters, young and old. The purpose, the plan of God. Bringing you to the Bible study every time and tonight in particular. Will be fulfilled. God gave Daniel a revelation. He lived by it. And he also influenced others. By his proclamation to live by that revelation. Pray that God will so help you that the revelation of the Word of God will make you have a firm resolve, commitment that you live your stand by this Word. There are some people in the New Testament, the Bible says they were always learning, but never, never, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Pray that you'll not be of that number, always learning, always hearing, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. But we learn about others. That when they received the word, they received it as it is in truth, the word of God, and not the word of man. And it works effectually, effectively in their hearts. Pray that you will be of that number, hearing the word, receiving the word. And you'll know it, recognize it to be the word of God. And it will work effectually, effectively in your heart, in your life. It will so change you, transform you. People will see and people will know of that change and transformation in your heart and life. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our Bible study. It's always a joy to be together and then to open the pages of the scriptures and to learn from your word. Lord, tonight we come once again and we pray, Lord, you grant us an open heart with the open book, and then your spirit will take these words, interpret, apply, enlighten our hearts and lives with your word in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, that what we hear will so energize us, empower us, enrich us, enlighten us, we'll be able to walk in the path of righteousness in Jesus' name. That through the study of your word, the weak will become strong. 
the ignorant will become wise. And those who are defeated in life, in the race of life, Lord, they will rise up and they will walk in victory in Jesus' name. We pray that the watching eye will make us to walk in the way of the Lord in the path of righteousness. Confirm each and every life, Lord. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. You can sit down. We're coming to Daniel chapter 5. And tonight we are wrapping up what we have learned in Daniel chapter 5. And we're taking one verse of scripture. I want to tell you this. There are some preachers. They preach just from one verse of scripture. Every time. But the pity of them, most of them, is that they'll take that one verse of scripture. And then they will not refer to all the scriptures to elaborate and to enlighten and to support that verse of scripture they have read. They just speak from their mind and they keep to that one verse text. And then they just ramble here and ramble there, tell stories and demonstrate and make an oration like uh, Herod made. We don't do that. It's the tradition, it's the principle, and it's the training in deeper life. That when we go to the Word, we get into the Word. And then we go to verses of Scripture that will support what we say. And I hope our preachers will learn from that. I praise the Lord for our preachers and overseers. Now the retreat is coming. And as the retreat is coming, our people, we're going to be blessed. Every word we hear, everything that is said, will enrich our lives in Jesus' name. But it's not the opinion of man that will bless us. And it is not the rambling and the stories that men tell. It is the word. The power is in the word. And even we quote a verse of scripture. Then we go to all the parts of the Bible because we know if the people are going to be blessed, it is that scripture because the word of God says that my word that I sent out will accomplish the purpose for which I've sent it. It will not return unto me void until it has done that for which I sent it. That's why we're encouraging everyone, all our leaders, all our overseers, all our district pastors, all our location pastors, anywhere you are, you're preaching any Sunday, any Thursday, any Friday, any Tuesday, any time you're preaching, get into the Word. Not just one verse. And don't tremble. And tonight, as we look at this, Daniel chapter 5. We're looking at verse 27. Daniel chapter 5, verse 27. Take care. Thou art wage in the balances, and art found wanting. Thou art wage in the balances, and you are found wanting. That was the message, the final word that came to Daniel. Sorry, that came to Daniel, yes, and was to be given unto Belshazzar, God has a judicial standard by which he measures and he evaluates and he examines and he weighs the actions of all men. The divine observation, the divine evaluation, the divine verdict on Belshazzar teaches us that every human being of every class is under the accurate observation of God's sleepless eyes. It is therefore of infinite importance to be conscious of God's watching eye every moment of our lives. And as we look at the scriptures we'll find, the Bible tells us very clearly, the eyes of God run to and fro, beholding every man, every woman, not only the believers. There are some people that think, well, I'm not, I'm not a believer. And since I'm not a believer, whatever I do, God is not interested in me. And it's not interested in whatever I do. That's wrong. 
You are a creature of God. And whether you are a believer or you are not a believer, God watches and God examines and God evaluates and God weighs and God sees and God beholds everything that we do. Let me show you the scriptures for that. In Second Chronicles chapter 16. Second Chronicles chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. You see that? The eyes of the Lord run to and fro. And it says throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect. Towards him, hearing thou hast done foolishly, therefore from henceforth thou shalt have wars. Turn to Psalm 33. In Psalm 33, I'm reading from verse 13. I'm showing you from scripture that it's not peculiar to Belshazzar that God saw him, God beheld him, God watched him, God examined him, God weighed him. It does that for everybody. In Psalm 33, I'm reading from verse 13. Psalm 33, looking at verse 13. The Lord looketh from heaven. He beholdeth all the sons of men. You see that? It's not only the church, not only the believers, not only the saints. Everyone on earth. The Lord looketh from heaven. He beholdeth all the sons of men. From the place of his habitation, he he looketh upon all the inhabitants of the earth. Mark it in your Bible. He looks, he beholds, he sees, and he evaluates what people do, all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashioneth their hearts alike. He considereth all their works. Uh, that's for everybody. In Job chapter 34, Job chapter 34, I'm reading from verse 21. For his eyes are upon the ways of man, and he sees all his goings. There's no doubt in your heart now. I've read it in so many places now. And it says, the eyes of the Lord, they are upon the ways of man. And he seeth all his goings. Psalm 44. In Psalm 44, we're looking at verse 20 and verse 21. Psalm 44. Verse 20 and verse 21. If, it says, if, we have forgotten the name of our God, or stretch out our hands to a strange God. Shall not God search this out? For he knoweth the secrets of the heart. If we've gone the way of evil, even though it is secret, even though it is private, even though it's in the night and in the dark, does not God see and doesn't he know the secrets of the heart? In Psalm 90, I'm looking at verse 8. Psalm 90, we're looking at verse 8. Psalm 90 verse 8, Thou hast said, Our iniquities before thee, Our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. And that means then, as we look at Belshazzar tonight, and we see that God beheld, and God saw, and God weighed, and God evaluated everything that Belshazzar did. The same thing applies to you, and applies to me, and applies to all the people on earth. He beholds, and he sees, and he looks at everything that is done. Psalm 139, in Psalm 139, I'm reading from verse 4. Psalm 139, verse 4. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. A word in my mouth, a sentence in your mouth. Anything that comes out of your heart through your mouth, it says... God knows everything all together. Proverbs chapter 15. In Proverbs chapter 15, we're looking at verse 3. Proverbs 15 verse 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. You cannot hide anywhere. Belshazzar could not hide in the palace of 
Babylon. God saw him. Because the Bible says very clearly, the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good. Beholding the sinner and the saint. Beholding the unjust and the just. Beholding the righteous and the unrighteous. He sees everything. He doesn't say, well, that one is a sinner. I'm not going to look at what he's doing. And he doesn't say that one is a believer. The blood of Jesus covers everything. You know, there are people that de deceive themselves like that. Oh, they say, I'm saved. And whatever I do, God does not see. Because the blood of Jesus covers me up. And God never sees anything I do. Those people are not reading the Bible. They're, that's the product of, you know, people sitting on the preachers. Not only preach just one verse. And they never go through the scriptures. Their preachers tell them, when you are born again. God does not see anything that you do. He only sees the blood of Jesus. It's a lie. Look at it again in Proverbs chapter 15 verse 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good. Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah. We're looking at chapter 23 and verse 24. Jeremiah 23 verse 24. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? Says the Lord. Do not I fear Ee, 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 ee,